So anyway, in 665, I wanted to talk about this Ezekiel vision. So this is Raphael's painting of Ezekiel's vision. And what Dr. Jung said is that Ezekiel's visions are of an archetypal nature. They're not morbidly distorted in any way. They are symptoms of the split. They already existed at the time between conscious and unconscious. Now, at the time, we have to say is the time of the writer, not at the time of Job, I suppose. But uh, is that what they mean by split psyche? You talking about that split? Well, I think in this case, he's talking about the split between the conscious and the unconscious, maybe. Um, but later on, he, um, you know, later on, he sort of indicates that this is sort of a, a summary of the Old Testament. Or maybe that's a later one, so let's go on. In the first vision, Ezekiel has seen the essential content of the unconscious, the idea of the higher man by whom Yahweh was morally defeated and who he was later to become. So what he's saying is that in this vision, and this is Raphael's version of Ezekiel's vision, there's a human man in this picture, right? And so whatever Yahweh is, he was defeated by the human man because the vision is of a human man, right? And pretty good, pretty pardon? good specimen of a man. <laughs> pretty good specimen of a man, and it's a man and he lived four or five hundred years ago, so, you know, he was a pretty good specimen then. I mean, when, when did... Nice facial hair. When, when did, when did uh, Raphael live? I don't know. I don't know either. Was he, was, he a Michelangelo's contemporary? Yeah, I think yeah. so, something like so that. That would have been, like, uh, 1550s or something? Yeah, yeah something like that. Something. By the way, did you see that Walter Isaacson has just published a new bi biography of uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, I pulled it down on Audible yesterday. No, I saw there's going to be a Tamayo talk soon. Uh, Tamayo is one of the people I like. He's, a, he's, a, he's an artist? Yeah. He's uh, Mexican. He's Mexican? Yes. And he's coming to Washington? No, 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 he's dead. Uh, but he, he he was a contemporary of Picasso and those that group. Uh -huh. But he did very iconic kind of imagery. It was, <clears throat> it, it, anyway, he's there was some other artist I saw today too, but I don't remember what it was. Yeah. Anyway, Tamayo got my attention because he's, there's going to be a talk about him and some of his work. There was somebody else coming up. Okay, so I, anyway, I think the significant, most significant aspect of this is if you look at Raphael's image again, what Jung is saying is that the Ezekiel has seen the essential content of the unconscious. Okay, it's an archetypal vision, as you say, in the at the archetypal level in the human unconscious, we see ourselves as over the animal. So in this image, there's a, there's a lion, an ox, and an eagle. God is riding on the eagle in this picture. God is, God is actually sitting on the back of the eagle and he's riding on the ox and the lion, but he's dominant. Basically, the human male hunk is <laughs> <laughs> dominant. <laughs> according to Raphael, that, that's Raphael. According to Raphael, that's the vision. Okay, so anyway, in 667, in Ezekiel, this is the first use of the term son of man. 
and in Ezekiel's symbol, Yahweh is drawing closer to man, but probably did not reach Ezekiel's consciousness. This is what Jung is saying, that it, it didn't get through to, to him. Why is, it son, why is the term son of man? Well, because it's not son of God, okay? In other words, well, that, that's son what I of, that's what I have the I I have the four definitions of son of man. But let me give you my definition first, um, which probably fits in with these. But I I think what they're saying is that Christ was interpreted as the son of God, right? The Virgin Mary was impregnated by God, okay? And so Christ was the Son of God, and therefore Christ was not a man. Christ was a God-man, okay? A demigod or whatever. I mean, well, no, he was God in the Trinity. He is God, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are all God, right? Okay. And so, but son of man would be a son that has both a uh, human father and a human mother, correct? All right, so let me read the four definitions of son of man here. First mentioned in Ezekiel, it's mentioned 80 times in the first four books of the New Testament. Scholars dispute the term into four categories. One, personalistic reductive category. It doesn't mean anything at all. It just means a human being. That's one. Two, archetypal, inter archetypal interpretation. The original man, the anthropos. In early Middle East, the primal man, man with a capital M. I guess humanity or something, right? Um, three, the messianic category, preordained special elect one, a figure who is to appear on earth and lead a life of suffering in order to redeem mankind. Okay, now that would be Christ, I suppose. That's the messianic, although Christ wasn't accepted by the Jews, but nonetheless, the Christian Church accepted, accepted Christ as the Messiah, right? Four is the eschatological view. It's a metaphysical figure, an aspect or partner of Yahweh. Um, he will manifest at the end of time. He will pass the last judgment. Okay, so that's the eschatological view of the Son of Man. Okay, now what Edinger says is, this idea is a true symbol. It won't stand still for a single interpretation. In other words, a true symbol. I've been able to figure out the definition all these years. Right, because it won't stand still. It's alive. It's alive in your psyche. It's alive in the psyche of anybody that's trying to understand it. Because it could be any of those things. And I accept that it could be any of those things, right? But okay. son of man implies an offspring of man, right? Yes, that's what I said earlier. That it means the son of a of a human man, not a god. All right. And and the I think the. I think the reason that Jung is emphasizing this term here is he's driving toward the point of the psychological dispensation of God, right? Which we've been talking about for months, actually. But so there was the, the dispensation of God as the law, which came with the Ten Commandments, right? Then there was the psychological dis or the then there was the dispensation of God as belief, which was the Christian 
view that God was all good and Satan was all bad, right? Except the problem is that Satan is part of God. God is everything. And so you have to see the opposites. You have to understand the opposites. Otherwise, Satan is going to get you, which is what he did in the 20th century when he destroyed a whole generation of the British nation and the German nation and then did it again 20 you know 20 years later did it again and right that was the apocalypse that's what Jung was talking about at paragraphs right I just said and the Russian nation and the Russian nation I mean we even did a more devastating job over there yeah so we killed 175 million people in the 20th century by wars and you know we haven't really gotten started in the 21st century but it looks like it might be coming (laughs) and we're revving up to it.